Hello folks, welcome back to the last, you'll be glad to know, uh, video in my series of three about trends in the periodic table. I'm going to start by humiliating myself because I'm going to ask you to name in your head three differences between myself and Chris Hemsworth. Go ahead, knock yourself out. We've got uh, height, good looks, uh, bank balance, um, but the one that I won't talk about here, which is the idea behind this concept, electronegativity, the difference between myself and Chris Hemsworth out on the town in a Friday night would be who has got the most pulling power? That's not a difficult question, is it? Um, what's it got to do with this and what's it got to do with chemistry? Well, it's got to do with, uh, let's take a chlorine molecule here. So chlorine is in group 7. It will have 7 outer electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, you notice there's two different types of electrons here. In blue, I've got the electrons that are not being shared. In red, I put the electrons that are being shared between our two chlorine atoms. Uh, electronegativity. The definition of electronegativity is the pulling power, in other words, the force of attraction that a particular atom has for the shared pair of electrons. So how strongly is this atom and this atom, how strongly are they pulling on this shared pair of electrons? Nothing to do with these ones, so don't get mixed up with these. It's the shared pair and the attraction between the nucleus and the shared pair. That's the electronegativity. That's the pull there and the pull there. That's the definition of electronegativity. And you are required to know the patterns in how it changes as you go from left to right and up and down the groups. At the moment, by the way, of course, because we're just talking about elements, we haven't moved on really to compounds. We will be, see that we will be doing compounds. The reason that we're doing teaching it in this order is we teach you these patterns, these trends, and then we look at the bonding structure in elements and then we'll look at compounds, and then it'll be the summer holidays. That's the plan. So, um, just like before, uh, we need to know the trends in electronegativity as you go from left to right, and also as you go from top to bottom. So, our very last video in this triplet, trends in electronegativity. You know what the good news is? The good news is you probably be able to guess them because they're very, very similar to the trends that we've seen before. Imagine what would happen to the pull between the center of an atom here on the shared pair and the pull between here on the shared pair. Um, you've only got two layers of electrons here, down here multiple layers. Oh look, it's that shielding thing again. Because these intermediate layers act like a shield, this nucleus here will have a much weaker pull on any shared pair of electrons than this nucleus here. And the second reason, if you look at the distance, this nucleus is much further away from the shared pair, this nucleus is much closer than the shared pair. Uh, and as we work away from left to right, Sorry about that, folks. I'll try and make that clearer. Three positives in the centre. Two and then one. Ten positives in the centre. Two and then eight. So, if you have your little shared pair of electrons here. Shared pair of electrons here. Not much difference in the distance, uh, technically speaking. That distance is actually slightly smaller, because these get smaller. But look, three positives, ten positives pulling on these electrons. So, as you go from left to right, you get an increase in electronegativity. And as you go from top to bottom, you get a decrease in electronegativity. Um, and that's us done, really. Oh, electronegativity values are in your data book. Um, if you need to look them up, the good news is if you actually forget this trend, 
electronegativity values are actually in your data book. You could simply look them up. And it's the same with ionization energies. They are also in your data book. They're on the page that I quoted last time. I can't quite remember what that page is. Let me just figure it out. Um, they are on page 11 of your data book. Uh, and it's on the right hand side of page 11. Uh, I might actually put that, I might put this PDF file up along with um, this assignment, folks, just to clarify. It's measured on the polling scale, <laughs> not the pulling scale. However, that's the appropriate little uh, mental uh, trick to get you to remember. So, electronegativity, what was it again? It was the pull that a particular element has on the shared pair of electrons, uh, only these ones. Uh, and you're required to know the trends in it. And these guys up here have the most pulling power in the entire table. And the guys down here, like myself, have the least. Um, so this is Chris Hemsworth. This is me. Um, the element that's up here, by the way, with the most of one is fluorine. Uh, one of the reasons that makes it so dangerous is it's got an incredibly strong force of attraction on the shared pair of electrons. And it makes a very, very strong bond. Um, that's all I want to say on these three videos. Thank you for listening.